In this lesson, we're going to learn about the penetrating power of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Let's first define ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is the emission of particles or electromagnetic waves that have the energy to remove electrons from atoms or molecules. Examples of ionizing particles or waves are alpha particles, beta particles, neutrons, and gamma rays. They have enough energy to remove electrons from atoms. Low energy radiation, on the other hand, cannot ionize atoms and molecules. Examples of low energy radiation are the radiation of visible light and lower energy radiation such as radio and microwave radiation. On this chart of the electromagnetic spectrum, you can see that ionizing radiation is any radiation that has a higher frequency than visible light such as ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. To the right of this chart are examples of non-ionizing radiation such as visible light, infrared, microwave, and radio waves. So just how damaging is ionizing radiation, and how does it do its damage? Ionizing radiation damages the DNA molecules in cells. At times, the DNA can be repaired. If the damage is irreparable, the cell may undergo cell death, or the cell may pass on this DNA mutation in subsequent cell divisions, often resulting in cancer. So we're left with the question, which type of ionizing radiation is the most penetrating and the most damaging? Let's begin by talking about the penetrating power of radiation. The most massive of these three forms of radiation are alpha particles. Alpha particles consist of two protons and two neutrons, whereas beta particles consist of just one electron. The mass of an electron is negligible compared to the mass of even just one proton or neutron, so we can see that the alpha particle is bulky and massive compared to the beta particle. And since the gamma ray is not a particle at all, it is infinitely smaller in mass than even the beta particle. It makes sense then that massive alpha particles would collide with other particles of matter, stopping the alpha particle in its tracks. Beta particles having some mass relative to gamma rays will get stopped by colliding with some particles of matter, but not as much as alpha particles, and gamma rays even less so. In this diagram we have paper, 0.5 centimeter thick lead and 10 centimeter thick lead barriers. As you can see, alpha particles can be stopped by paper. Alpha particles can also be stopped by skin, so you have less chance of being exposed to alpha radiation unless you actually consume the alpha particles. Beta particles can go through paper, but are stopped by relatively thin lead. Gamma rays, on the other hand, can only be stopped by very thick lead most of the time. Their relative penetration power, alpha to beta to gamma, is 1 to 100 to 10,000. This means that the beta particle has 100 times the penetrating power of the alpha particle, and the gamma ray has 10,000 times the penetrating power of the alpha particle. This also means that gamma rays have 100 times the penetrating power of beta particles because 10,000 to 100, or 10,000 divided by 100, is equal to 100 times. Again, alpha radiation can be stopped by paper and skin, beta radiation can be stopped by wood and thin pieces of lead, and gamma radiation can only be stopped by thick pieces of lead. In this visualization, when a water molecule is struck by a gamma ray, it produces free radicals. The gamma ray splits apart the water molecule, creating the ionized hydrogen ion and the ionized hydroxyl radical. Hydroxyl radicals combine with each other to form peroxides. The most penetrating forms of radiation are not necessarily the most damaging. In fact, the opposite is true. Alpha particles are the most damaging form of radiation, as can be seen by this chart of the radiation weighting factor for each type of radiation. Alpha particles can cause the most biological damage because of their size and bulkiness. Luckily, alpha particles are the easiest to protect against. Whereas we see that beta particles and gamma rays are the least damaging, they cause the most concern because they are the most difficult to protect against. Radiation can be detected by Geiger counters, scintillation counters, and film badges. Protecting oneself against radiation involves a combination of shielding, which means wearing protective clothing or being behind protective barriers, distance from the source of radiation, and time of exposure. When you get your teeth x-rayed at the dentist, the x-ray technician protects you with a lead bib. That's an example of shielding. 
the technician, him or herself, leaves the room to stand behind a lead-encased barrier, an example of shielding, distance from the radiation source, and time of exposure, because the technician is exposed to this radiation all day long. The x-rays are themselves very short in duration. This is an example of minimizing the time of exposure. So why do we use radiation in the first place? Because of its many benefits. Radiation is used in crime detection. Neutron activation analysis detects trace amounts of elements by bombarding the sample with neutrons from a radioactive source. Some of the sample becomes radioactive, whose half-life and emission are unique to that element. This is how forensic scientists identify trace elements at a crime scene. And of course, we all know examples of using radiation in medical diagnosis and treatment, such as the x-rays I mentioned earlier, and MRIs, radioactive tracers, and in the treatment of cancer patients.